All right, we're going to hook up the R3 right quick and get it operational for use. And there's two things you're going to be plugging in to the back of the R3. One is going to be your gas hoses. The other is going to be your ignition cord. And this comes in there. That you'll notice that um, this handle here is a little weighted. It's because there's batteries in it already. And this is what ignites the gases. So you're going to plug this into the back, and that sets it off. So let's start by plugging in the cord. You'll notice on the back right here, this is where your plug goes into the back of the R3. And make sure when you tighten this up, you'll twist it and you'll, feel, you'll hear it click. That's going to lock it into place so it's good and solid. So when you put this in the hole and start flowing the fuel, this is what will be setting it off. And the batteries that come in here are a good high quality Duracell battery. When you want to replace the batteries, you just need to unscrew this bottom here, pull it out, and you'll see where the two batteries are. Replace them with a good quality battery, and it should last you a couple years of operation. Okay, the next step we're going to do is hook the gas lines up to your R3. So essentially you've got your 50 foot hose. There's two ends on each hose. One end threads directly onto the back of the R3. The bottom is your oxygen and it threads clockwise. And the top is your propane. It threads counterclockwise. Now if you're going to use um, some type of quick connections, this would be the place to put them. You'd screw your hose right into your quick connects and the quick connects on the back here. Okay, so now that this end is, is on, you'll take a wrench and snug it up good and tight. The other end is going to go on the regulators. So you just take your fuel regulator, tighten that down, and then take a wrench and snug it up good and tight. The other end is going to go on your oxygen Thread that on clockwise. Fuel gas is counterclockwise. Okay, and then these will attach directly onto your cylinders of gas. So now that this is all hooked up, we're going to show you how to let the gas flow on this, and then we're going to set our mixtures of gas. So how this works right here is we've got your gas flow lever right there. When you want to let the gas flow into the tunnel system, you're going to depress this switch right here, and then you'll notice on your cord there's a piece of uh, colored shrink tube on there. What that's designed to do is to go underneath the handle here so that you don't have to sit here and manually hold it. So you'll slide this underneath here, and then you'll stand back, keep track on your watch how much time is going in, in the tunnel, give it a tug that'll let it pull the cord out from the handle, and then you'll ignite it. Okay, now that everything's been hooked up on the back end of the R3, we're going to use the attachments for the front end. And you can use it just the way it is to poke it down a hole, but it's much easier to use the attachments that come with it. This is a flexible hose, and what the purpose of this is to take this flex flexible hose and poke it down in through the tunnel system of the animal you're after, allowing this to sit up on the ground. So this is really easy to hook together. All you're doing is pushing that in good and tight and then closing these, and that'll lock it on there. And when you first get it, it can be a little tough to push that on there because there's a rubber gasket in there. So you just need to push in really tight and close it. The other attachment we have, and this is really handy for pocket gophers and moles, is this can hook directly onto the end and you lock it into place. So you can just walk up and stick this in a gopher hole and then go back and set your gases. You can hook this attachment here to the back of this to give you more length but I find it a lot easier just to put this directly on the end of the unit or to have this directly onto the unit. The choice is yours though, whatever's more convenient for you. Okay, now we're going to show you how to set the gases on this to go out and actually use it in the field. Before I do that right quick, I want to go over a couple quick features on this that I know you're going to have questions about. Okay, this right here is your gas lever. It lets gas flow into the tunnel system when it's pushed down. You're going to notice there's a little switch under here, a little toggle switch that you're pushing on when you're letting gas flow. This is a safety device, and what it does is it disarms the electronics while the gas is flowing, so that that way you can't ignite it while gas is flowing down the tunnel system. Next thing you're going to notice is this big brass check valve right here. And you're going to notice this black ring around it has a green 
O-ring underneath there. And if you don't see that green O-ring, it means that this has been activated. How this works is it's activated by pressure and heat. So if you have a pre-ignition and you've got a flame coming out the end, this is going to activate, close, covering that green O-ring and instantly stop the gases from flowing through it. Okay, so the check valve right here, if you've got no gas flowing through the device, it means this green O-ring is not exposed. To expose that green O-ring again, you just pull this back, you'll hear it click, and you kind of recock it more or less. Okay, now, one other thing I want you to look at is here on the lever that you're gonna hit to let the gas flow, there's a hole in the back, and there's a little brass screw in there. What that's going to do is that's going to adjust the amount of fuel, propane, that goes into the mixture. So your oxygen is open, and this is your only control that you're going to adjust on the device is this. And what you'll do is you just get a little screwdriver and twist it clockwise to close it. And then you're just going to crack it open just about an eighth of a turn and let it flow for a few seconds and then fire. What that's doing is, depending on where you're at, elevation can play in your mixture of fuel. And you want just enough fuel in the oxygen to get it to ignite. So if you crack it open about an eighth of a turn, give it three or four seconds worth of gas and try to ignite it. If it does not ignite, then you'll want to adjust this to about a quarter of a turn open and so forth up to about half of a turn open. I, I think that wherever you're going to be about a quarter of a turn open, you'll, it'll start firing. So now what we're going to do is we're going to actually set the regulators to the right amount of gas. And how this works is it's very easy. It, both regulators need to be consistent on the pound it's setting at. So if you have this set at 15, then you're going to need your oxygen set at 15 as well. So we're wanting identical pressures off each regulator, and then we're just controlling the fuel mix back here on the back of the gas flow handle. So the first thing you want to do to turn these tanks on is take your little adjustment knob here and back it out a little bit and slowly turn your fuel tank on. So we're going to twist this in a clockwise motion up to, let's say, 15 PSI, so we're about 100 kPa, same difference. Do the oxygen here. This shows you how much is in the tank. This is your volume. This is your poundage. So now we're going to adjust this up to 15 PSI. So 100 kPa as well. OK, now we're at 15 pounds on each one. This has been adjusted to about an eighth of an inch open. Now that's going to let the gas flow. I'm not going to fire it right here. When we get out to the field, we'll actually ignite it. But where we're at here, this, this gas mixture is perfect to get a good ignition. Now the difference on poundage of your regulators is the amount of flow. Here in the States, we have pocket gophers and moles. And you want to feed the gas into the pocket gopher and mole tunnels a little bit slower. Um, when you get to larger burrowed animals, like prairie dogs, badgers, um, groundhogs, or some types of burrowing rabbits, you're going to want to put a larger flow in there because it's a bigger cavity. So for those type of animals, you'd want to adjust your pressure on both regulators up to 40 to 60 PSI, just as long as they're the same. And then you won't need to adjust this because this will be this, the same fuel mix for those. So if you're doing pocket gophers, we're setting at 15. If you're doing prairie dogs, we're setting at 40 to 60. And so the larger poundage you're using on here just means more gas is getting into the tunnel system quicker. And you really want to get a lot in there because the quicker you get the gas in there, the, the quicker um, and the quicker you ignite it, the more of a, a good reaction you'll have. The longer that gas has been pumped in there, the more chance that propane has to settle out from the oxygen. So you want to keep it mixed tight to have a better reaction. All right, we've assembled the whole R3. We've got our gas mixtures set right. Now let's go out to the field and show you this thing in action.